Now hopefully I won't be stupid and put a hole in the skin. If I do, you're all my witnesses to my stupidity. I'm looking for my skiving knife. It's here somewhere. All right, well, we'll use this then. This will work. I'm going to go along and remove these tendons, huh? like so. Get under the skin, like so. Remove this tendon. There we go. Scrape the, oh, here's the scarf knife. Scrape this away. I get this heavy stuff off. This is the stuff the tannery doesn't bother with because, of course, they do not do anything by hand. It's all done on the round knife and other sort of thinning machines and whatnot. And you cannot use a heavy machine on the back of a deer's ear. This is up to the taxidermist to trim down and put holes in so that you can't blame the tannery. <laughs> and as someone who started his career in a tannery, I actually wanted to be a taxidermist. They put me in a tannery. So now I'm going to turn this right side out and I'm going to fit the, oh, well, there's a little bit of cartilage right on the very, very tippy tip of the ear. You can see that right there. Let's get that little booger off of there. Believe it or not, that little booger right there will make a difference in it fitting or not fitting to the tip of the ear. Ta-da! All done. Okay, now I'm going to turn it right side out and put my thumb to the tip and turn the ear right side out. Let's come right out here. Grab the uh, gently grab the tip and pull it out. Now we now have two ears. No waiting. Two ears with no cartilage in them waiting to waiting to go waiting for it to go now i'm going to take the unshaped unshaved ear liner put it in the ear try and get it in straight from the start you know get it to line up properly you got to remember now these are small ears on this deer this deer actually had one ear a little bigger than the other. One ear was five and a quarter. The other ear was five and one eighth inches long. So he had odd size ears. Okay, now here's where that hole is. Right here. That's the hole that was in the, in the ear skin. That will be closed. And seeing how it's not on the leading edge I could very possibly stitch it. I think I'll glue it. Now we want to make sure when we look in the ear, we want to make sure that looking down into the ear that the ear skin is not banging into any of the detail. Now there's a little little schnutz hanging over there. Looks like a little tonsil. I'm just going to snip that little schnutz out of there. Oh, here it is. Now we go around, and you can see on the very edge because the I say the ed the edges are thick still, but you can see on the very edge here how the skin is not really lining up on itself. Okay, which means the edge needs to be trimmed away just a wee bit. I get the tip. To fit in place, we roll the skin, roll the skin over this way, get it to fit down in there, and you can see the amount of tension that there is on the inside of the ear skin, because this all needs to be trimmed. 
So now I'm going to gently remove the ear liner. And when I say gently, I mean gently. I'm going to roll back the ear skin a bit, roll it up the ear liner, and start working the ear liner out. And after the skin has been loosened, I want to push forward a little bit so I have the tip free. And I'm just holding the tip. I'm not pulling on this. I don't want to pull the hair out of the ears. I'm holding and I'm pulling back on the ear liner. Pulling back on the ear liner so that it removes from the ear. Now, having seen where it needs to be trimmed, I'm going to trim it. Normally I use a pencil, but on this older plastic, and the fact that it's so darn dark red, I really can't see what's, I really can't make out the pencil mark. So, what I'm going to use instead, I use this on the other one too, I'm going to go ahead and use a marker. I'm going to set it by using my finger as my guide to set my, my distance I need removed. And I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to adjust it as I go. I don't want to remove too much, but I do need to remove just enough. Now, even if the ear liner turns out to be a little small, that's better than the ear liner being too big. I'm going to go up to the tip here. I'm going to come around. I'm going to go now. The nice thing is you, you can see through the ear liner at this point. I'm going to also take down some of this. I'm going to mark it on the outside. Uh, it's wet here, so it's messing with the ink just a bit. There we go. And I'm going to line up my mark on the inside along the outer edge. Okay, that done, I take a scissors. This is a heavy lineman's scissor. And I'm going to trim the ear liner. S start here. And I want to be careful. I don't, I don't want to go inside the lines. I want to stay either on the line or just outside the line. Staying just outside the line is fine because the next step will be to file this thickness down. Around the tip. This is tough over here. So I'm going to end using the scissor at that point. And I'm going to pick up my curved paring knife and I'm going to pare this away with a knife. I want it to be as even and careful as possible. And I sure as hell don't want to cut my hand open again. That will leave me up for a couple of days if I do that. Now that's done. Let's get this evened off here. A little bit of a bump. A little bit of a bump. I want to get rid of that bump. That's more from the thickness of it than anything else. Now down here, where I couldn't start with the scissor, down at the bottom of the ear, I'm going to come in with the knife. I'm going to pare it away like so. Nice thing about this plastic, it slices beautifully. Okay, now, if we didn't have a thick edge before, we sure as hell have a thick edge now. Look at that. Look at, how, look at the thickness on that. That's going to be taken down. And for that, 
I'm going to use a file and I'll show that in just a minute. Let me set up for it. The double woodworker's file. One side is a rasp. We have a flat side and a curved side. It's sort of a half and half deal. Half of the flat side is a heavy wood rasp. The other half is simply a wood file. The curved side, one half of the curved is a wood rasp. The other half is a wood file. And they both work in tandem to do the job on taking down the thickness and the edges on these ear liners. And I'm going to start like so. I'm starting by thinning the inside of the ear first. Okay, this does a twofold purpose. This will trim down the ear and it will scuff it up pretty well. So, now that, that I'm going to go from the outside, I'm going to thin down this edge here on the outside. One of the reasons I've chose these ear liners is one, the heavy color. It has a heavy red color on this and on this uh, thin haired deer, that's going to give me a nice pink shade of ear showing through. And also the veining on the back of these ears will shine, will show through, should show through. It's not going to say, it's not, it's not a summer coat, so you know, it's not going to show a whole lot, but it may show. What I'm doing now is I'm taking down the seam of the two halves of the ear down the back. That's number one. And then I'm going to turn back over to the rasp and I'm going to continue on rasping down the thickness of the ear edge. I gotta be careful that you can you can take away too much and actually distort the shape, which is what I did. I made a boo-boo. Okay. We'll fix that up. We'll match it with, there we go. And the nice thing is the paste I, I'm using now, the Pro One paste uh, from Paul Kales, will really help fill that in. Now let's just make this match up. Okay. Now I'm going to take down the edge just a little more with the heavy rasp. Just got to pay attention to what the heck I'm doing. That's the problem. All right. Now let's go with the wood file side so I don't ruin any more of the edge. There we are. And strain it out, level it out, I should say. Level it out just a bit. Now this takes it down to the marker mark. Marker mark. Now I'm going to go the interior of the ear and just scuff that up with the raspy side. I'm going to go ahead and scuff some of it up. Now I'm going to go along and I'm going to thin the leading edge along the top. And I'm going to do that from the inside first. And now from the outside. And I use my fingers to help uh, support the ear. It'll take down the plastic. It may scrap, scrape your fingers a little bit, but so be it. I'm tough. I could take it. I'm a harbor guy. <laughs> It needs to be thinned just a little bit more. Now back to the wood file, smoother wood file side. There we are. We'll even it off. Now here, 
is where it really needs to be taken down, right here. And for that, I'm going to use the flat side of the rasp. I'm going to start by removing the outside thickness. Now let's flip it over to the round side to get this curved area here. Now the finer file. That's coming down nice. Now I'm going to go along the inside, the inner edge of the ear with the rasp. And this is really going to take it down. I don't want it too thin. I don't want to lose the body. I don't want to lose the, uh, the strength of this part. But I do want to lose the thickness. Ouch. That hit my finger. <laughs> that hit the old finger -oony. Let's get this here. I want this more rounded. This has to round in. And I want it to round in. Like so. Now you're going you're gonna to see it. There's going to be a huge difference when next I show this. A huge difference. Let's get all that out of there. Let's scuff up the inside of the ear a bit more. Okay. Now, Here's what we've got. Let me get my knife and scrape this a little bit. There we go. Scrape some of the plastic off. I don't want it to be so rough that it's going to come away from the plastic inside the ear either. Now, here is this area of the of the the upper fold of the ear again, taken down quite a bit, as you can see. This will allow it to fit the ear more closely, the ear skin more closely. It will fit the ear skin much more closely. Now I'm going to take my my form rougher from Combs Classics. I'm going to go ahead and rough this up a little bit. Now this will get your fingers also. It will not bite into the plastic as bad as the stout rougher. The stout rougher will slice clean through the plastic. And if you hit your skin with the stout rougher, your fingers you're going to have some gashes that are going to be nasty. I also will do the base. Why am I going to do the base? Two reasons. It gives my hands something to grab as I install it into the ear. And it gives the clay something to adhere to when the earbuds are built up. So it has a twofold purpose of, it serves a twofold purpose to do the butt. Or I should say the base, the, the base cartilage part of the ear. Now that that's done, I'm going to go on the inside, score up the inside of the ear, the ear liner, like so. And this will allow the paste to really adhere very, 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 very well. And I don't want to lose a lot of the detail on the back, so I want to be real careful there. Now I'll take the slim rougher and I will get under here where the Joe Combs rougher cannot reach. I will get down in here first. Very lightly. You don't if you press too hard you will slice clean through this plastic. I know. I've done it. I am speaking from past bad experience. <laughs> Been a little over enthusiastic. 
get under where the ear turns, under the top turn of the ear, ear liner. All right, now that's all it needs. Now we're going to go back and fit this to the to the deer, to the, the ear skin. And here we go. Make sure this is opened up. Get in like so. Get the ear liner in. You will find that once you trim them down, they will go into the ear and pull out of the ear skin a lot easier than they first did. I want to make sure we get this all lined up in the right place. There we go. Very nice. Oh, golly. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Very nice. Bring the skin around and get it in place. Oh, the brush, the brush. Now, you can use a wire brush. I'm using a nylon brush. This is a more delicate deer, so I don't want to, I don't want to brush his hair clean out with a with a metal brush. So I'm using a, a nylon bristle brush, a nylon detailing brush. There's a seam that runs the back hairs to the front hairs, and you see that seam right here where it joins up. Now on a mount, that would be this part of the ear base, okay? The ear base would sit like so. Uh, let me see if I have something here I can demonstrate that with. There we go. Let's see if this works. This is kind of big for this little deer, but these are the... Uh, Earbuds uh, uh, designed and developed by Nikki Bonora, and now they're sold through Jim Allred Supply. These are good for use with uh, guys who set Bondo ears. Uh, also, you can use them with well made ear liners. Now, you would need a little bit of clay just to join this together here, but you can see how the hair comes together on that seam at the front and rear and how that flows down the earbud. Okay, you can see that right there. And right here, this on a on a on a on ear casting, on a reference cast, you'll find that little bump right there too. Try to see where my ear casts are. And they're here somewhere. Oh, well. They're on the wall behind me, just out of reach. But anyway, uh, if I were to use this on here, I would be sure that there was some clay inside to make sure that it all lined up and that there was a smooth junction between the ear and the ear butt. But what we've got here right now, we've got the ear... Oh, mm -hmm. We take the earbud out. We have, we've got the earbud, uh, the ear liner, sitting well within the ear skin. We've got a nice, nice, finer, much finer edge than we did before. The tip comes all the way up, as it should. We have lots of excess skin on the inside. It's almost a little on the baggy side, which is nice. That will allow it to adhere and fit into place where it's supposed to be. Uh, let's see. Got this little repair here that needs to be made. I think I'll do that on camera, show how I make that repair. It's not going to be stitched. I'm just, I'm going to simply glue it. I'm going to glue it from the inside. And this needs to be lined up. So we need to draw the skin in this way and up and around. And you want to be careful. See what I just did there? I just loosened that surface skin on the front of the ear. Damn, I didn't want to do that. It's very, this ear, these ears are very delicate for this deer. 
that'll that'll work down that'll come down but what I've got here I've got the ears really in position where I want them okay I've really got them where I want them and we've got the hair coming like so I think I'll just take that little piece of skin out of there there it's gone And we've got a nice little shape here. Here we go. There we go. And the ridges on the ear line up with the ridges on the ear form, the ear liner. And this will allow a nice pink color to show through when it's dried. And it will also allow some of the veining to show through. Not a lot. There will be some. And you I don't know how well you can see it here, but as I press the wet hairs down, you can see a great disturbance in the force. Actually, it's a great disturbance in the hair pattern. You can see the veins coming here and here. That's the main veining detail. So I press down tight, and as the Pro 1 hide paste, uh, dries the skin and it sucks down to the ear liner, these details will show even more. Now on a really short haired deer, they will show through beautifully. But this is going to show through just enough. All right, let's take this out and move on to repairing the damaged part of the ear. Oh, by the way, the repairs to the front of the ear are really un unnoticeable. There's no patch to be seen because it was a clear patch. It was clear patches. They were clear patches. Now let me dry my hands a little bit. I don't know, maybe I'll use the rag here. Cloth. Nope, it's just slipping. Okay. And get this like so. Yeah. I just want to work the ear liner out of the skin. Push the skin up the liner. Here we go. I want to grab. I don't want to pull. I don't want to yank this way. I do want to pull the ear liner out of the ear skin. Well, looks like it's going to roll out anyway most of the way. You got to remember now with the the ear liner textured now, okay, and scuffed up. It's adhering more than it did before I, before I did all that work to it. But now here's a nice ear. Let's turn it back inside out to make the repair that's needed. And hopefully I won't make it any bigger than it already is. <laughs> that's always the hope. Always the hope and the wish of me is not to do any more damage to the darn thing. Ooh-wee. Okay. There's two ways to go about this. One, you can stitch it. The problem with stitching this part of the ear, it's on the very, very thickest part where the ear turns over. So I don't want to do that. That's why I'm going to glue it together. Well, what I've done here is I've put that wooden form back up into the ear, this time with the rounded side along or against the uh, front of the ear skin. And I'll take my modeling tool and I will push the hairs down back outside where they belong. All right. This will then allow the skin edges to butt up to each other. I have a latex glove here that I use for making these patches repairs and I'm going to cut a piece off. Let's see. Where was I? Here we go. This was a thumb. This was one of the fingers, I believe the thumb. That I'm slicing off here. 
And because of the way it's made, the curve will stay with, with the, uh, the latex. So I'm going to get that lined up, and I'm going to get it trimmed. I'm going to trim the patch I want. I want rounded edges. Like so. And like so. There we are. Okay. Now that that's lined up, it's a good size patch. The reason I like to use the latex is that it will have some stretch, it will have some give. This will also be long enough to accommodate this little boo boo further up the ear, right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is make sure this is lined together. Get this in here. I want the hairs on the outside. I don't want them in here. And I'm going to take the tech bond and I'm going to put a layer along the edge of the ear. This is going to be a little more difficult. It's in a really tough spot. There's a thick section of cartilage and skin here. So to get it to stay put, it's just going to be a little on the rough side. I'm going to hold it down with my finger, like so. Take the cap off with my other hand. And I'm going to try like hell to get this where I want it. Okay, there we are. Now, I'm going to hold that down tight. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here, all up along to here. One side only. Then I'm going to establish the start of the patch on one side. The reason I'm working one side only is so that the patch will set on this side of the cut. And I want that to set. All right, now that the glue is set on one side of the slice, the injury, the boo boo, push the hairs back down. Bring the skin, make sure the skin is brought together tight. I'm now going to apply glue to the other half of the opening on the ear. I'm only going to do the large portion first. I'll do the smaller patch at the front here after this is done. I'm going to spread this onto the skin and some of it onto the latex glove. Now I'm going to work, I'm going to flip the glove over with the tool. Check, make sure it's closed. Yeah, it's closed. Okay, now there's lots and lots of glue under there. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the front hole repair, this little one here. Ow. Stuck to my finger. That's what it do. It sticks to the fingers. Let's get a little bit here. Let's put it on the skin. Only. Not on the glove this time. Push the skin close together. 
bring the glove up and around. Here. Together. Together. I know. I have I don't have transparent hands, I'm sorry. Okay. Done and done. Now, with the plastic scraper, I want to press this in really close contact along this detail. Now, the excess latex glove will be trimmed away at this point. Well, I'm going to let I'm going to let the glue set a bit first. Then I'm going to come back and trim it up. And here we go. I'm going to trim this up. Like so. I'll trim the larger side. Now, I'm going to use the spreader to press that down tight contact. I think what I'll do too is I'm just going to add a little bit of glue, a little bit of the cyanoacrylate glue along the edges, like so. Cap my glue. <coughs> And now, spread it down tight, tight, close, tight contact. There we go. And there we go. Okay, I wipe off the excess with my finger. It cleans off the skin with acetone, I'm not concerned. All right, let's make sure it hasn't not adhered to the wood. The wood is dry, which means no glue leaked through. The outside has no stickiness to it where I have my finger on the outside of the ear. I'm going to wait until this dries before I turn it right side out. Here we go. Right side out. This is closed off beautifully. This is where the repair was made. Press, it, press the edge tight together. And that's it. That's where the repair was made. I'd say that's a successful repair. A little round of applause, please. Thank you. Okay, the next step is to install the ear liners. Proving the old adage that you can teach a new, an old dog new tricks. I'm the old dog. Pro One Premium Hide Paste is the new tricks. I've begun using this on my deer mounts and I've been more than pleased with the results. Uh, this is what I use to adhere the cape to the form as well as the ear liners to the ear, uh, the ear skins. The color of the paste as it comes out of the uh, manufacturer's container is white. And that's very good for capes and skins as it doesn't add any color. It's also thick enough that it does not leach through the skin out onto the hair, which is what was happening and has always happened with dextrin hide paste. I would end up needing to wipe down the, the hair side or the fur side of a mount after using the hide paste, uh, dextrin-based hide paste. Uh, to get this pink coloration, I simply add red flocking. I add in enough 
to mix in to get the shade that I want. Um, I found that it pays to go a little darker as, uh, as it dries because of the white base of the paste. Um, and if you go a little darker than you would normally want to see, it will allow the color to show through the deer's ears. As you can see here, the color of the paste actually shows through the skin. And very little touch-up is needed. Just a little touch-up is needed here, here and there. But uh, there is no drumming in the final results on the deer's ear. The ears are very secure and very tight. Prior to switching over to the Pro One Premium Hide Paste, my first, my first go-to choice for ear liners was Polytranspar Epoxy Adhesive. Now, this is a two-part epoxy adhesive. It dries relatively clear. It's kind of an off, off pale yellowish color. But again, the addition of flo red flocking to the epoxy paste renders the pink color through the ear skins. This sets up, this begins to set up, oh, within 45 minutes to an hour and is fully cured in about three hours. Four on the outside. 